in that period, it was very hard to look at myself, especially because I'm somebody who cares deeply about physical appearance as well. When I looked at me in the mirror, I really didn't feel powerful. I, I didn't see myself in a mirror. My name is Emilia. I'm a leader from Groningen. And today I'm here to talk about my experience with mental health and eating disorder. I've always loved food. Food is much more than fuel only. It's part of the culture, bonding with family, with friends. When I came here, I came to study and I came to play basketball. And I tried to achieve greatness both in academic terms and in basketball. Um, at the beginning, it didn't work. So I entered that difficult part that reflected in me uh, within three months, gaining weight of 20 kilos, uh, which was a lot and which really became a problem. Um, I don't like to dwell too much on my problems and I don't want to uh, attract too much attention, especially when it comes to vulnerability. So what I um, end up doing was pretty much try to be radical about it, restrict as much food as possible, and then come to my solution that I would just drop weight and that would be fine. Because um, I didn't approach it as an eating disorder. I just approached it, okay, this is weight gain, I need to lose it the, as quick as possible and it's gonna be fine. But what happened is that I was living a very intense lifestyle, which sometimes meant like not only one training a day, but also two if I include gym. And two, as I said, two games a weekend, plus uni on top of all that, plus the fact that I came to a country that I've never seen before. I just moved here without ever seeing the Netherlands before. And I approached it with that radical uh, food restriction, which ended up in me having even less energy. When you, when you restrict, I don't know, I would, for two or three days I would eat barely anything and then already fourth, fifth day, I was so hungry that I would just eat the insane amounts of food. It took time. It took time uh, for me to accept that it's more than simple um, diet, that it's much deeper than, oh, like now I have to lose weight because of this. It, it's, it was much deeper for that for me. And the worst part of it uh, was the feeling of losing control or feeling like you have no power of, of your life, what happens next. And I don't like that. I didn't like that. I like having, I'm very stubborn. I like having power in my hands, especially over my life. Um, so I thought to myself, okay, this is not working. I have to choose the harder way, which for me, the harder way was accepting that I do have a problem, um, but that it doesn't define who I am and I'm not gonna let it define who I am. So I need to approach it slowly, see where is the deeper root of the problem. I figured out where it came from. I don't like approaching problems bigger as they are and that I want to get over them quickly and that I don't like talking about problems. Especially when I moved to the Netherlands, I was so far away from my family and it was extremely difficult to talk about this in person, let alone to call and say something like this. For me it was the fact that when I see them in person, I don't want to spend time talking about the problem, I want to enjoy the time with them. And I realized, okay, the more I close into myself, the more I turn to food, because that was the comfort zone for me. I cannot have all the control of the whole problem in whole areas, it's gonna leak somewhere. And for me, it leaked in that way. And that's probably the thing I regret the most, not talking to people. I don't want everybody to know, I just want to go through it strong and alone. Mm, I, I think it's the goals that I had at the moment and that I still have that are like very big to me and very important and I didn't want to, anything to prevent me from getting there. To me, um, being vulnerable means that I let perhaps um, others see that part that I don't like. Like I, I perhaps I would show it to my family and that's, that's okay, but I were too far away. Um, but I don't like others seeing that. Yeah, I think that's the reason. And that's also where 
the power of internet came, in my opinion. Oh, sorry. <laughs> no, I'm fine. Just, okay, so, yeah, regarding internet, um, it was so easy and so helpful to listen to other people talk about it um, because I didn't have to talk about it, but I felt understood. So that's why I'm here today as well. Yeah. I would say that it does not define you. As big as it feels, or as big as a, of a problem it feels, or if you're in this vicious, vicious cycle, just to remember that you're going to get through it and you have all the power to get through it and it's not power, more powerful than you. Trusting people in your community, in your family and telling them about it. They're not going to solve your problem, you're going to solve your problem, that's the reality. But it's going to feel so much easier having it said. <laughs>